All right, so we told you about Seinfeld coming to the UIS Performing Arts Center. Can't wait for that. I saw him when he was in town. Ah, gosh, what was that, like six, seven months or so before the pandemic came in? And then once that came in, it changed everything. Uh, But it looks like that's all subsiding and we're back into business. Out at the UIS Performing Arts Center, which is a fantastic venue for the performing arts here in Springfield. And joining me right now is Betsy O'Brien. She is the Education Connection Programs Coordinator for the UIS PAC, and she joins us in studio. Betsy, thanks for taking time with us. You guys have some very exciting things coming up. Up, not just Seinfeld. I got to say also, I'm super stoked about the Book of Mormon. I got to get my tickets for that. But there's other things going on that people might not know about, uh, like these national touring uh, uh, featured uh, performers. We've got some stuff locally that people really need to know about, and that's what you're here to talk about. So let's get right into it. Sensory friendly performances. What's going on here with that? Yeah, we have uh, developed our first couple sensory friendly performances which are going to be specially designed to offer a sensory-friendly experience and a welcome and inclusive environment for some of our community who may be on the autism spectrum, maybe have friends or family, loved ones who are on the spectrum, or have other sensory needs. Uh, we wanted to. We know sometimes attending a big performing arts event can be a little overwhelming and have a lot of anxiety, and we want to create something that will have a, um, a better experience for this specific community. Uh, some of the things that we'll be doing to to address some of these issues, we will have our sound won't be quite as loud as it may be at other events. Uh, and we, we welcome anyone who wants to, to bring noise reduction headphones to come in and experience. We'll limit the, the contrast from the brightly lit stage to the, the house where the audience sits. We'll leave those house lights dimmed a little so it's not quite as um, big a difference. And mainly we just want everyone to know that this is a a really welcoming place for people to come and experience the performing arts uh, any way that they that that they do. So when you talk about the sensory friendly performances, uh, of course, there's different factors from the lighting to the sound. Um, Is this going to be for specific performances that are already scheduled or uh, like, for instance, you know, say the Book of Mormon, for instance, is there going to be a sensory friendly performance of that or are these going to be separate standalone productions that, specifically tailored for those who might get overwhelmed with certain lights and sound volumes? That is an excellent question. So we're, we're trying to sort of do both of those things in the sense that we have two specific sensory friendly performances where everything has been designed and modified for this audience. Um, and those are going to be, we've got our first one, Experience Songs of Illinois, with uh, an Illinois musician, Chris Valillo, who will be coming in. And that's Thursday, November 10th. Um, and Experience Rock Ballet, which for those of you who might know, the Copper Coin Ballet Company's Rock Ballet, they're modifying some of that and bringing it in so that we can um, we can have a, a nice, you know, wonderful dance performance for this audience sure. as well. That'll be Thursday February 9th of 23. And for each of those shows, we're going to have both a school performance during the day for any schools or organizations that want to bring, you know, kids on a field trip and a public performance in the evening for anyone who wants to bring their families. Uh, That's a big deal. I mean, I mean, listen, it's it's, uh, we're we're recognizing more and more there are individuals who are on the spectrum uh, who who might have. Uh, a certain um, adverse reaction to loud noises and lights. But we all know that enjoying live productions, live performances, there's something inspiring about that. Uh, But sometimes there's a, a huge barrier for certain individuals to to take part in and enjoy that. This lifts those barriers. That is exactly what we're trying to do. We want to make sure that the the arts are available and enjoyable for everyone. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking with uh, Betsy O'Brien. She is the Education Connections Programs Coordinator for the UIS Performing Arts Center. They've got a whole host of special productions going on. Uh, we talked about Seinfeld earlier coming back in February. I'm excited about the Book of Mormon. Uh, you just had uh, a whole host of different performers there as well, but a whole bunch coming up this spring. Uh, so. You'll be hearing more about that, of course, but there's another production that's going on that uh, UIS is actually going to be putting on themselves, and you guys are kind of putting out the casting call, so to speak. That is exactly what we're doing. Yeah, I um, 
We have a wonderful school performance series, the Class Acts, a Staley Class Acts series that we do to invite schools to bring children and enjoy, you know, get maybe their first taste of professional theater. And um, unfortunately, during COVID, some some production companies are having a harder time. And I found that we were not finding some of the titles or, or theatrical productions that I wanted to be able to provide for our area students. And so uh, we have decided to create one ourselves, our own um, artistic uh, director, Carly Shank is uh, going to be directing it. She is a well-known theater director here in Springfield, and we are going to be doing And Then They Came For Me, Remembering the World of Anne Frank. Oh, wow. So this is an incredible multimedia play that combines both video interviews with Holocaust survivors Ed Silverberg and Eva Schloss with live actors who are recreating um, scenes from their lives. Mm. And it is just incredibly moving. And we're going to have auditions for this show coming up in October, October 24th from 5 to 7 p.m., October 27th, 4 to 6 p.m., and October 29th, 1 to 3 p.m. And we're looking for six actors um, from this area, and it will be um, it will be a paid experience because, <laughs> because this is a professional performance that we are going to be putting on, both for our school, um, school field trips, but also for our general public as well. I, I think that's fantastic because uh, we have such a thriving uh, community of performing arts. And a lot of the times it's it's a community theater type of setting and it's really uh, driven by volunteers and that's wonderful and that's great. Uh, but sometimes uh, that, that doesn't necessarily recognize the incredible work that uh, a lot of the local arts people put in. This is a way to recognize that. So uh, uh, again, Betsy O'Brien with the UISPA with us talking about their own productions they're getting ready to put on and auditions coming up. Uh, Betsy, if people want more information about those auditions, uh, maybe uh, you know uh, some information about the performances you're doing, where can they find that? Uh, if you go to uispac.com, you will be able to find all this information. If you check out under our link for local arts and arts education, that's going to be where all of this information is. So local arts and arts education. Uh, again, you've got the uh, PAC Ewing, uh, putting on their own uh, productions of a couple of different performances, and it is going to be paid. So they're going to be doing auditions. Uh, get that in front of all of your uh, your local uh, performers, uh, and we'll see you on the stage there. Uh, Betsy O'Brien, what else you got going on? Those are two big. Uh, those are two big things. Was- you know, the sensory uh, friendly uh, performances, and also um, UIS PAC doing their own production is. Well, it's a, that's a lot. It is. We've got um, one other new new thing that we have in production right now. We currently have an artist in residence working with us at uh, the Performing Arts Center. Uh, local artist Reggie Guyton is our our stage, our voices artist in residence, and that is a program that we're working on to sort of raise and amplify voices of communities who are underrepresented in the arts. And he is, as part of his residency, creating a new work that will be available in February. Um, It's got spoken word and music. And this November, Friday, November 18th at 7.30 p.m., uh, there will be a sort of preview event that people can come and see some of this work in progress as it's being developed, along with um, some other emerging black artists who will be there to perform as well. So exciting things happening at the University of Illinois Springfield's Performing Arts Center, and you're hearing about it here with Springfield's Morning News. Again, that's Betsy O'Brien. She is the Education Coordinator Programming, um, the Education Connections Programming Coordinator, uh, giving us all those details. And uh, Betsy, again, if if people want to learn more about the sensory-friendly performances or if they want to learn more about the production that the uh, PAC is putting together, uh, give us the details and where they can find that. Uh, You can find more information at UISPAC.com and then look for our local arts and arts education 
And also, of course, you can always call us, 217-206-6160. Well, Betsy, thanks for coming in. Exciting things happening at the UIS PAC, and we'll see you there uh, for for all kinds of performances that are coming up. Again, Seinfeld in February. i got to find the dates for when the Book of Mormon's coming, but uh, that's going to be a big one I'm excited about. Uh, But uh, so many other things going on at the uh, UIS PAC, as you just heard about their sensory-friendly performances and also uh, the uh, Performing Arts Center putting together uh, several uh, Springfield-only productions, uh, and that will be a professional production with paid actors coming right here from the community, so that's uh, that's exciting. Uh, Betsy, again, thanks for taking time with us this morning. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. Just want to take this time to remind you, Real Men Wear Pink. It is October. I just donated $250 to my Real Men Wear Pink campaign. If you can match me on that, that's fantastic. But every little bit helps. All month long, we're going to be raising money and awareness about breast cancer, which impacts one in eight people. Imagine that. One in eight people get that devastating diagnosis of you have breast cancer. Uh, then they have to go through all kinds of different treatments from chemotherapy to radiation to to, to surgery. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of research that still needs to be done. We don't have a cure, but it's something that we all can come together and donate to help those and also research to find a cure. Go to WMAY.com slash pink, WMAY.com slash pink, and donate to my Real Men Wear Pink campaign today. And uh, hopefully we can far and exceed what we did last year, which was a huge, huge goal, and we blew right through that goal. So let's do it again this year. Again, WMAY.com slash pink.